it's great that you're all here um, talking with us today. Uh, three of you are undergraduates in the program in DC in this, this semester, so spring 2017, and Megan, you're a public diplomacy student, grad student here, uh, same semester. Uh, so I'd just like to kind of go, go down the line and ask all of you a few questions about what you're doing and uh, where you came from. And we'll start with, with Zach. Uh, can you just tell us about your background, where you're from, and uh, what studies you've undertaken at Syracuse? and what you're, what you're doing here in Washington. Yeah, so I'm a junior from Cato, New York, which is about 45 minutes outside of Syracuse. Um, I study international relations and political science. Um, I studied abroad my first semester in Strasbourg, France with, uh, with the um, uh, Discovery Program, and it was an incredible opportunity to um, be able to go off campus and, and learn about um, international relations abroad. And then I went abroad again my, uh, this past semester in Beijing, China, which was another incredible opportunity. Um, and so my focuses are right now are on international security and diplomacy. And I'm interning at the Department of Defense in the Under Secretary of Defense for uh, Policy uh, for European and NATO policy. So. Fantastic. OK, so Giovanna, because you're the next yes. in line. Uh, my name is Giovanna. I'm from uh, Como, Italy. And I'm studying international relations and public relations, international relations with uh, focuses in international security and diplomacy and Europe. And actually, this is my f only semester away from campus from Syracuse. And I just decided to come to Syracuse to discover like the uh, professional culture in Washington and in the US. So. Great. Thank you. Michael. Yeah, so my name's Michael. I'm from Auburn, California, 45 minutes right above Sacramento. Um, this is also my first time uh, going abroad, um, so I'm up in D I enjoy being here in D.C. Uh, I'm interning at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies in the Military Affairs Program, and uh, part of the reason that kind of brought me here was to have the, the networking opportunities here at my disposal. Great. Thanks a lot. Megan? Hi. I'm <laughs> Megan Solo. I'm from um, East Greenwich, Rhode Island. And I'm a public diplomacy graduate student, which basically means I'm getting a degree in international relations and public relations. I went to undergrad at Hobart William Smith Colleges, which is just 45 minutes west of Syracuse. Um, at, in grad school, I spent the summer, this past summer actually, at Maxwell and DC program, went back to campus in the fall, and I'm back here in January. Um, I work at the Department of State in the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Great, which is where you interned as well? Yes, that's where I interned um, as well. And so there, like, maybe you can, we'll go kind of back down the line again in a different direction, okay. but maybe you can talk about how your internship over the summer and the work that you did there kind of transitioned you into um, getting a job at the State Department. Yeah, sure. So um, in May 2016, I started, said, State Department, Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs and the Office of Public Affairs and Strategic Communications. We really like our acronyms at State. Um, and as an intern, I did anything from videography to design to public affairs, public relations, really like anything you could possibly think of. Our Bureau specifically handles all the exchange programs that the United States runs. So the Fulbright program, the Critical Language Studies program, which are ones that I learned about um, extensively at Syracuse. And so during that time, um, I really just kind of took on any projects that they were willing to give me and to, you know, took on these legacy projects that are my office had been wanting to do for years and just really never had the people to do it. And so that kind of helped me, um, you know, make my, make my mark on the department. Um, and then at the end of my internship, they offer in August, they offered me a full-time position to start in January, this past January. And so I moved down to DC end of uh, December, I think a week after my finals were over, started January 3rd, and I've been back for four months now in the same office. I'm now a visual communications designer, so I'm doing full-time, you know, basically graphic design for the government, which I don't think a lot of people think exists, but I do a lot of that from, you know, brand guides for the State Department to logos for sports diplomacy and all of our exchange programs. So I've, it's been a really nice transition because while I was back at Syracuse for the fall, I was working virtually with them as well. So, you know, 10 hours a week, I did a virtual state internship. So kind of like the poster child for State Department internships. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed it and they've given me, you know, so many opportunities and I think it's actually helped now when I'm working with State Department interns to know that like I've been through that process too and I can kind of help them ease into it a little bit more. So. Yeah, and you're living proof that life does exist after graduate school. Yes, and that, it and does. That internships actually and count. And after undergrad too, I hope. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So, uh, Michael, a different question for you. Uh, you're a senior, so yes. you're uh, one of the few in the class, maybe the only senior, the only, thinking senior, of, the yeah. only senior who's yeah. graduating. Uh, can you talk about how you decided to, why you decided to come to Washington 
and why it was important to you in your last semester of your senior year to, to come here. Yeah, so the Maxwell and DC program has definitely be, been in my sights since when I first transferred in my sophomore year. And the purpose, uh, the way I structured it was I wanted to go that last semester before I graduated just because, you know, it's, I think it's a different experience when you're a junior and, you know, if someone, you know, the networking opportunities you, you receive every single week, you know, someone after, after every single visit wants to, you know, offer their information out to you. So being able to let someone know who's in a position to p potentially offer you an appointment <coughs> or some kind of uh, a connection to somebody, you know, is a lot more useful when somebody, when you're, uh, about to graduate, you know, you're, you're done with your studies and you're looking for employment or you're looking for um, some kind of an opportunity to go to the next step. So I, I thought that the semester before graduation would have been best is for my uh, for networking opportunities. Right. How about the, the connection with the academic program on campus? How have you found the transition from doing academic work on campus to the kind of work that we do uh, both here in the classes and also in your internship? Yeah, the curriculum, uh, as far as understanding uh, international affairs through the International Relations Program, it's definitely uh, provided me with the information to uh, succeed here. But as far as being in this program specifically, you go from, you know, writing the capstone, which I did in the fall, um, to writing short memos. So it really uh, challenges you to be a lot more brief, concise with your thoughts and um, your knowledge about, about certain topics, you know, which is a great tool to have, especially, you know, here in DC, a lot of things happen brief, concise, not a lot of time, so it's very useful. Right. And I guess since that was a question that generated a decent response, why don't I ask you the same question, Giovanna? What's mm -hmm. been, uh, how's the transition been for you, and what have you f um, found in terms of the different work style between campus work and the work you've done here? Mm -hmm. So I definitely agree with Mike. Um, I had never written memos before for classes on campus. So that was definitely something new and it's definitely, it's actually something that I have to do for my internship too. So it's nice to see, very interesting to see the difference between memos that I need to write for school and for my internship. But uh, what I found is really like, um, it, it's taught me to be concise as Mike said. And also I consider myself pretty knowledgeable about certain issues, but this program really forces you to look further and like learn about issues that you wouldn't normally learn about. My f uh, focus in Europe, I'm very interested in the Middle East, but I basically know nothing about China or Latin America or Africa, so it really challenges you that yeah. way. Super, okay, so Zach, uh, you're at the Pentagon. Correct. So you get to walk into the, the, the big building every day and, and mm -hmm. uh, walk past all kinds of important people. Uh, what's that been like for you in terms of uh, that experience of working in the Pentagon and being a student at the same time? Um, it's been challenging, but it's been fun at the same time. I mean, I work 32 hours a week at the Pentagon and then I, I do school afterwards. So that's a, that's a hard, you know, it's a, it's, you gotta balance it. Um, but I think it's really rewarding to be working in the Pentagon. I get to meet all sorts of important people. Um, I met the Swiss ambassador to Iran a few weeks ago. I was um, escorting a, an EU delegation of important generals last week from Italy. So like, I, I, get, I get to meet a lot of important people. Um, I actually sat in on an interagency meeting with the State Department, the NSC, and the CIA two weeks ago. Um, so it was kind of cool to see that, yeah. that how the interagency works. So it's definitely an interesting experience to be able to sit in and see how government really functions and how policy is really made. So yeah. that's been a rewarding experience for me. How has that, just out of curiosity, dovetailed with the program that you're in academically here in DC in terms of the, the type of work that you're doing, the emphasis of the coursework, that kind of thing? So it's kind of cool. Like the, the memos we've been writing for class for all of our professors um, have kind of mirrored what I see and have been helping with in the Pentagon. Like we write memos all the time in the Pentagon. Like. Um, the Under Secretary of Defense is requesting memos on um, Iraq and Syria, um, you know, Russia all the time, and so I've been helping with edit those and create those types of um, pieces of work. And so, being able to practice that type of writing within our class and then use it in the Pentagon and then vice versa, like it's a really um, interesting way of of learning. So it's it's fun. Is the type of writing similar, or are we doing things uh, the wrong way? <laughs> no, it, it's generally very similar. You have to be brief and concise. They want bluff bottom line up front uh, when it comes to these memos so I think um, we've been learning how to do that pretty well here in the Maxwell program. Excellent okay so Megan um, what's the best part of the public diplomacy program here in DC or actually can you maybe describe it first what do you do in addition to your work at the State Department uh, and when you come to class in the evening? Yeah so I work uh, you know 40 hours a week um, and we have class twice 
every, one class every week and another class every other week. Mm -hmm. So it's been really great about that as I've been able to combine a lot of the work that I'm doing um, in my job for my class as well. Um, one of our classes are research consultancy and I'm doing that specifically for my office. So I'm creating um, basically like a how-to guide on designing for diplomacy. So how we understand colors and typography based on the country that you're in. And that was something that I pitched to my boss. You know, being a full-time employee, I was still able to do that. And he was like, great, sure, like go after it. And I was still, I was able to use all that work as well for that class. And that was the one that's every, every other week. Um, our class that's every week is really just kind of a get to know all these really great people in your sector and learn about um, all of the different jobs that you can have in public diplomacy that maybe we don't think about, as well as so you know certain topics. So yesterday we talked about public diplomacy in China. Um, it was you know, you know so many experts that we have um, that we get to talk to, and it's a great networking opportunity for us. But it's also nice because we do have our still our PD cohort together. And we're all very close, so we're all kind of you know figuring out the. You know, the interning full time as well, or working full time and having two classes is a lot, but mm -hmm. we're able to kind of support each other with that. And um, can the, the ability to combine work is, is, a, is a huge aspect for us. Otherwise, I think we would be all overworked. <laughs> but, yeah. 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 Great. And how about the consultancy course? Did you talk about that in any great detail? Maybe yeah, you could just describe that a little bit more. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, our, so it, it, uh, specifically in the course, we have um, either we're talking about the research that we're doing and, you know, basically helping each other out of, you know, I had this question about, you know, how to do social media strategy and maybe someone else in their internship has learned a lot about that or that's the thing that they're, they're, they're focusing on. So they'll, you know, we can give each other advice, which is always peer-to-peer -peer advice is very helpful, as well as we have people coming in to talk about how they do research. So we actually invited my boss and my colleague to come in and talk about um, uh, social media, web analytics, as well as just you know general analytics and how we use that in our research. So I was able to bring them in, which was a really great addition because I got to learn more about actually what they do um, and learn from them and how that I can use that in my own research as well. So. Neat. <clears throat> okay, fantastic. I don't think we should have probably started with this, but maybe, Mark, you, Michael, you can help us to fill in the gaps. Um, can you describe <coughs> the undergraduate curriculum and what you do when? So we know you intern every day, uh, either three or four days a week, but what do you do the rest of the time on Tuesday, Wednesday nights, and then on Thursday? Yeah, so the week's kind of broken up by um, kind of a concentration on different sorts of curriculum. So Tuesday night, we're focusing more on security issues that face um, different regions in the world. So we try and uh, divide it up each week. We're going towards a different region, t even towards a different country, and the different security challenges that each of them are facing. Um, not necessarily how we could fix them, but just acknowledging that they're, they're there and, you know, uh, maybe making comparisons to other uh, lessons that we've that we've learned about throughout the semester. Um, Wednesdays we get to kind of go into the political economy aspect of it and learn uh, different aspects of trade, not only with you know U.S. trade but U.S. trade policy and its impact on the foreign market. Um, and you get to kind of connect it with the economies of other countries as well. Um, Thursday is more of a traveling. Um, seminar to where you're, it gives us the opportunity to go visit different types of uh, um, maybe even it could be an embassy, it could be a different type of think tank that has a specialty with what is being taught that week. So, for example, if we're learning about the Israeli Palestine conflict, um, you know, we were able to go to the Palestinian delegation office today, you know, or even the Israeli embassy, which has been offered in the past. And, you know, it kind of gives you a chance to really listen to someone who is the official voice of the matter so right excellent and then Giovanna can you describe the National Security Council project that you do mm -hmm. yes so um, with our class with Dr. Williams we are doing a National Security um, Council project in which we are basically putting ourselves in the shoes of a National Security Council advisor and basically just writing um, we chose a topic at the beginning of the semester uh, based on our interests for example I'm doing mine on the Civil War in Yemen which is something that I always wanted to learn more about, but never really had the chance for my classes. So I did, just decided to do for this project. And it's basically just broken up in learning about the issue, like the background, the history, and then just like going into possible recommendations on how to solve the issue. We've looked into public opinion and how that uh, changes our, per our perception of the conflict or whatever topic we're studying. And then like basically 
the end goal is just coming up with a proposal for a resolution for whatever our problem is. So it's definitely been very interesting and, and it's pretty challenging, but very interesting. Excellent, thank you very much. All right, so Zach, uh, what is it like to take classes at CSIS and uh, what do you think about kind of the experience of being at CSIS and has that been impactful in any way? Yeah, so CS CSIS is this um, really cool think tank here in DC that um, one, we have really cool classrooms and it's um, actually pretty exciting. Today we had the Italian Prime Minister there speaking right above us. Um, there are all sorts of events that happen there every week and so I think that um, being part of the, the Center for Strategic and International Studies um, is definitely useful for our, for our classwork. Um, we've had people from the, uh, the Asia Studies program come down and talk to us. Um, just having this group of experts right there ready at our disposable, disposal is definitely um, useful for our, for our research and classwork. So it's, it's been a great experience. Great. Um, anyone else want to chime in on that question? What, uh, what it's meant to take classes at CSIS? How about for the graduate students? Is it, um, has it been helpful? I know you've probably had some experts from CSIS come in and talk to your class. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that been like for you? Well, I just think the location, I mean, specifically that it's in D.C. A lot of people, when I tell them I'm you know, do, taking grad school classes and working, they, they ask if they're online. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't even think about that. I was like, oh, well, we have a campus in D.C., obviously. And so I think that is um, a whole different aspect of it. It's just it adds the in-person learning and the, you know, the high quality work that we're getting at Syracuse and just brings it to DC for us. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of us, um, you know, we're learning about people and agencies and organizations in Syracuse that we may not have been able to reach. <coughs> but being in DC, these people are able to come to us um, or you know, uh, Dr. Schneider is able to give us their information and we're able to go meet them for coffee, mm -hmm. which I think is a really great aspect of it. So the location, I think, um, is, is definitely a, a basically adds just a lot of importance and we can learn a lot from it because it is in DC. So. And I'm glad you brought up the networking aspect, which is another big aspect of the program. Um, how about, don't, before you, before I move on to Michael, uh, what degree of importance did you place on having a Washington program when you made your decision to go to graduate school? How important was it for you that we have a presence in, in DC and you could take courses here and do internships here as part of your degree program? Well, when I was looking at grad schools, I was looking, I, I studied abroad three times in undergrad, um, and I wanted to make sure that at least there was some kind of abroad program, and I never got to do the DC program in my undergrad, so it was something I really wanted to do um, for grad school, being that my program was public diplomacy, and really public diplomacy happens at posts around the world, and in, um, you know, DC and in many agencies. So that was a really great importance for me, so the fact that I've been able to do it twice um, is great. I think that the fact that we end our program, like you said, with your last semester, senior and you know I graduate in three weeks or four weeks something like that um that for all my friends who are trying to find inter who have internships or trying to find jobs it allows you to say you know in three weeks I'm you can hire me and I will be here and I've moved here and I think that I mean that definitely helps us especially in grad school um being that a lot of the people we are meeting uh do what are often likely to potentially offer us jobs. It was what happened to me over the summer, the fact that I was coming back here in January. I really said, I was like, you know, December, I'm back here. I can work full time. And they're like, oh, well, that's interesting. You know, most people graduate in May. I was like, well, I mean, I still do that, but I can work full time in January if you need me to. So I was like, I'll come back for you, promise. Yeah. Um, and that is actually what have, that's how I ended up getting my job because the budget ended in, um, you know, the, first, the fiscal year ends in September, so they were able to add my job in October, and I started in January, yep. so, yep. yeah. Delighted that you all came to do this. You're very nice you to spend your afternoon uh, here with, with this video and, and sharing your experiences and your insight into the DC program and to what you've been doing before. Uh, thank you very much.